Hey guys, Clint here. I thought I would invite you to see what I've got for lunch here. So remember, I've been at this for a long time, so this might not be what you're able to eat right away. But I'm going to show you what I eat for maintenance uh, of rheumatoid arthritis inflammation to keep it in check. Now remember that what we're trying to do is to fuel our microbiome so that they create short chain fatty acids so that they keep the gut wall uh, at the least permeable level so that we don't get translocating uh, lipopolysaccharide and bacterial components in the bloodstream which trigger inflammation. So we want a fiber rich meal and that's what we've got here. So let me walk you through this. There are no oils in this meal or any of the meals that I eat because cooking with oil increases free radicals and creates advanced glycation end products. So there's no cooking with oil in our family. This meal was done in an Instapot. My wife used a little vegetable broth to create that sort of moisture in the meal. She used to cook on a stovetop, which you can certainly do for your meals if you don't have an Instapot and works great. I had leftover potatoes. And so what I've done is I've taken the rice and curry and put them together and mixed them in with potatoes. So that's not real conventional. It doesn't make for beautiful viewing here on the video. But uh, this is reality, right? I only just decided to film this in a spur of the moment. I've got a side salad here, as I always have. This is a mixture of different leaves, three different uh, types of leafy greens that are pre-mixed in a bag and pre-washed. So I can just throw them straight into a little container there. So I'm going to get the bulk of my calories from the main meal Right, and so then I've just got the side salad to add antioxidants and minerals, uh, baby spinach in there. It's got specific um, prebiotics for feeding healthy bacteria. And then I also ha always have with my lunch some oranges or orange juice. And I just so happen to have both at the moment for no particular reason. I just felt like uh, doing both. We got lots of oranges, so uh, I threw an extra couple in and cut them up. So oranges and orange juice are fabulous for reducing what's called lipid peroxidation. So with rheumatoid arthritis, there's a strong association with what's called oxidative stress, which is where the body's incapable of neutralizing the amount of free radicals that are being created. And the biggest source of free radicals in someone who has rheumatoid arthritis is not the food, it's the ongoing inflammatory process. So what we wanna do is we want to have a very anti-free radical lifestyle, which is one that includes lots of antioxidants. Now, the biggest problem associated with oxidation in a person with rheumatoid arthritis is the oxidation of fats, especially the fatty acids that make up the lining of our cells, which we have trillions of cells in our body as the building blocks. So I'm always on the lookout for a reduction of free radicals. And so oranges are a sensational way to um, counteract that. They've also got something called beta cryptoxanthin, which is an antioxidant that's been associated with a preventative effect of rheumatoid arthritis. So that's why I like lots of the orange-based citrus fruits. Before I start my lunch, I have two little probiotics here. They've got similar strains, yet slightly different. I've got both strains because I like to combine the strains in one probiotic with strains in another because the combination covers all the strains that I'm trying to, to cover. And also I often, not always, chew a little side of a little um, clove of garlic as I eat. And so I found I'm able to consume a garlic clove or a half one in this case. A couple extra things about garlic. It's a wonderful antimicrobial against P. gingivalis, which is one of the oral residing bacteria, which is implicated for the development of rheumatoid arthritis in some people, and also in the severity of rheumatoid arthritis, and is associated with the development of anti-CCP antibodies, which we know as a diagnostic tool in our lab work. Garlic's also a great prebiotic feeding beneficial strains of microbes in our colon and is also effective against suppressing yeasts and fungus. So I like garlic uh, as I eat and I'll just take a little nibble and then I'll eat some food and it reduces the amount of exposure to, um, to, to, to then have bad breath afterwards. It's still there, but uh, it's not as strong. And I like to do that as opposed to do garlic supplementation or I like to get it fresh straight from the clove. So that's what I do. And I have my um, omega-3 um, 
fatty acids here. So this is the brand that I like. It is Zinzino, uh, fabulous high quality omega-3 from an algae source. And this oil is also nice to taste as well. So actually like it, it's hard not to actually do too much. I do more than the recommended dose because the fats get burnt a lot when you exercise a lot, which I do. So it's a really, it's a preferential fuel source if you go to the gym and work out and stuff. So I take more than the recommended dose and I love that. My omega six to three ratio is excellent on this particular product. So that's almost all. I do flavor my food with some salt. I use a seaweed salt. So what this is, a little shaker bottle that, or, or container that comes pre-packaged, and it is seaweed salt. The flavor of the food is about 50% from the seaweed and about 50% from the Celtic sea salt. And so I like that because the you know the, the, a lot of the flavor is coming from a more of a healthier source in the seaweed. The seaweed contains a lot of wonderful minerals, so that's a, a great way to increase mineral intake without it just coming from sodium chloride from the actual salt. I think I've covered everything there. Uh, that's my lunch. I won't go any further. I actually want to eat this. I'm really hungry, which is another important thing for me to note here. You want to sit down to eat your meals hungry, okay? Because digestion is dialed in and tuned and ready to go. I've found over many years of having RA that if you sit down to eat and you're not very hungry, you're guaranteed to stimulate or increase inflammation after that. Digestion needs to be ready to go with green light and that is hunger. So I don't snack between meals so that when I get to my meals, I'm super hungry and I then make sure that I eat enough. As you can see, it's a large meal. I eat enough at three meals a day so that I maintain my weight and, and have enough energy to be able to work out as well. And doing this means that I'm hungry at meal times, and that is as crucial as anything that's actually being consumed is to have an appetite when you sit down to eat. If you don't have an appetite, earn one, work out, make yourself hungry. Hunger is where it's at, all right? So I'm gonna eat now. Thanks for watching this video. If you wanna be able to eat these foods without pain and you wanna be able to you know, add more diversity and, and more bulk to your diet and you haven't been able to because of food sensitivities and just lots of inflammation, make sure you check out rheumatoidsolutions.com where we've got a step-by-step -step dietary plan to get you from some simple foods, reset your gut, and all the way through to being able to eat in a diverse, healthy, wonderful way. Okay, thanks guys, bye for now.